Hello and welcome to the Wicker Library. My name is Aaliyah, so happy to have you here with us today. I decided that for Valentine's Day I would make a video really celebrating the books that I love and have loved since I first began reading, which if you're being technical was since I could read. And I wanted to reflect a bit on the past 20 years of my life and all of the books that I've loved, all of the books that really made me who I am, and the books that just started off and really sustained my love for reading. I owe so much of my life to reading and I'm so thankful that when I was younger my parents would read to me and then later when my younger sibling was born I grew up reading to them and that really made me love books even more and I've had such amazing teachers in my life too that really kind of nurtured that interest and passion for books and I thought that Valentine's Day would be a fantastic time to really celebrate the biggest love and the most important love of my life which is the love of reading ignoring the love I have for my friends and family or blah 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 but the love I have for reading is really special and I decided that I would start from the beginning start from 2003 and what my infant favorites and toddler favorites were and the first books that I really remember loving and then you know as I grew and as I read more what those books started to be as far as favorites go. So as I mentioned, I was born in 2003. I am a July baby and I remember several favorites growing up and it's kind of funny because I don't necessarily remember these books as much as them being read to me as much as I remember reading them to my younger sibling, but we shared all the same books, like we reused the books that I loved when I was younger. So I remember books like Monster Mama and loving having my actual mom read that to me, and it was always so special to me. And also reading All the Places to Love, that was one of the first books that ironically enough I learned to love. I remember there was a day in elementary school every year that was called Deer Day and it meant it stood for drop everything and read day and for the whole day we just came to school in PJs and brought blankets and snacks and we just read all day and I remember bringing that book with me and being so excited because it was one of the first books that I had learned to actually read and I was able to read by myself and I just reread it over and over and over again all day and yeah that book I remember really dearly I also remember Nuffle Bunny I remember reading that one specifically with my dad and finding it really funny that Nuffle Bunny the character's dad in that story looked to me a lot like my dad looks or looked to me at that age and I remember loving that one. I remember the Madeline books being really special to me as well and I think Madeline was actually where <laughs> my fear, like a genuine, not quite irrational but slightly irrational to the extent I had this fear of having my appendix burst came from the Madeline books and I just remember loving those illustrations even more than the story and just quoting that all the time with my mom and my dad. So those were some of my early favorites and those books along with so many others that I remember the like covers of but I don't actually remember their titles and I'm not in my childhood home currently so I can't you know go through all of the books that we've kept over the years but I think it was very special growing up learning to read and also being read to I remember the froggy books those whole series I remember because I learned to read them pretty early on and I was six years old when my younger sibling was born and so I remember reading those books to them and doing all the funny voices for them and making them laugh and things like that so those books are also very special to me for sure. <laughs> the next books that I really remember just altering my brain chemistry was in 2009 when I was however old I was and like can I do the math? I was like six years old. Yeah. 
2009, I was six years old and I started reading not quite by my own, but I started picking up chapter books and bringing them to my mom from the library, being like, mom, read this to me. This has such a cool cover. And I remember we together would read the Spiderwick Chronicles. And those books I loved so much. It helped that they were all about fairies and these fairy worlds. And the magic in them was written in a way that you could believe that same magic was in your real life. And I remember getting really obsessed with field guides, all of those like dragonology or wizardology books. I, I wanted them all and I loved flipping through them in bookstores, not even getting them, just like looking through them. And I also remember the Spiderwick Chronicles very clearly because I truly believed there were fairies in my yard and in my garden and I would go out and play with my friends and climb the trees and pretend we were tree nymphs and we would find kelpies and all these magical creatures. I had the field guide. I had everything that I could get my hands on. It was very easy shopping for me for gifts and things like that and birthdays because I always had a very large obsession growing up and for a while it was Spiderwick Chronicles, fairies, and honestly that's that's never that's never really gone away. And those books to this day just hold something so special. <laughs> Around 2010, I started really discovering found family in books, and this really started with the Mysterious Benedict Society. I loved those books so much. I looked up to the characters so much, and I wanted to be them. I wanted to be friends with them, and this was one of the series that I began by being read to, so my mom would read them with me, and we'd read them together, before bed, we'd read, read a few chapters each night, and I was obsessed. I was obsessed with this idea of being different and being chosen for this like secret society and these group of adventurous kids doing missions and creating a family and just these loners becoming heroes of this story. And I was obsessed. I was so into it. And as the series went on, I was able to start reading them myself. And I remember feeling so cool and like better than everyone because I had such a thick book with me and I was rather young and I was like, I'm reading this book all by myself. And it was an ego boost for sure. And I'm sure everyone hated me and had a right to, for sure. <laughs> but those were some of the first books that I started reading by myself. And speaking of big books that really carved out my personality early on, The Search for Wandla was also an obsession of mine. And I remember the illustrations just being the most gorgeous thing. Tony Dieterlizzi, who also illustrated the Spiderwick Chronicles and co-wrote those books. I really loved the series of Wandla and those were huge books because they were mostly pictures but I also remember my mom reading out loud parts of it to me and just really getting into fantasy and science fiction and these magical worlds and this found family and I, I was obsessed. I was obsessed. Next we have 2012. So this is starting to be when I was in sixth grade, I think, or actually fifth grade. And I really discovered my local library. I had been going there for years. I basically grew up in my public library. My after school program that I would go to uh, we would always go to the library a couple times a week and we'd check out books and you know I would usually go and check out a bunch of picture books and have my mom read them to me but in 2012 I started to check out my own books for my own reading at school and between classes and things like that and I remember all of my friends and I were reading a series of unfortunate events and we were all reading them so it was really fun because we'd all chat about them we all thought that Count Olaf was following us we were really into eyeballs and finding them everywhere we could and I remember my friend and I both went to the same after school program and we were on the same book and we went to the library to get the next book and there was only one copy of the next book and we both needed it and we were like well what do we do and this is actually <laughs> this is actually insane but I fought her 
in, like fist fought her in the library and we had to do it quietly. And I remember being like, well, the only way to know who reads it first is to fight. We are going to fight over the next book in a series of unfortunate events. And I remember one of our other friends was like mediating, was like watching the fight to make sure we weren't too loud because we weren't worried about hurting each other. We were worried about being too loud in the library because we were respectful kids, um, let alone the fact that we were fighting in the library over the next book. And you know what the worst part is? I think I lost. I think I lost and had to give the book to her. And I remember crying and being just so mad because I was like, she cheated. She probably didn't cheat. We, we were both young and very silly. But yeah, that was just definitely a core memory for me. Um, and yeah, and now I want to be a public librarian to, you know, mediate fights as an adult. Next, we have sixth grade, 2014, and this was a very important year for me because not only did I read one of my favorite series of all time, which is The Inheritance Cycle, or the first book is Aragon, this book was written by Christopher Paolini, I believe his name is, and I remember learning that he was 16 when he wrote it, and I remember thinking, that that was insane and that I could write a book and publish by 16 or even earlier. So at 11 years old, I was like, I'm going to become a writer. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start writing. I had a first grade teacher earlier that had really nurtured a love for writing already. So I already enjoyed it. But reading Aragon really made me realize that I could write and I could do something great. And I didn't have to be I didn't have to wait to grow up in order to do that. And I remember having my first novel ideas and writing them and being on a car trip in LA and we stopped at a restaurant and I, I had an idea and instead of writing it down on a piece of paper, I didn't have a piece of paper, but I had a pen and at the restaurant there was a placemat and I remember writing out my first couple ideas on a placemat and bringing it to school and writing it in class and like not doing my classwork and instead just writing my own little worlds and things like that. And yeah, Aragon definitely, I, I have that book to thank. And I also remember in sixth grade starting to read books that were a little darker and a little heavier and more worldly if that makes sense i remember reading counting by sevens which i'm curious how i would enjoy rereading um i don't know if it aged well or anything like that but i do really remember loving that book and it was the first time i felt such an emotional connection with characters and really feeling all of their pain and all of their joy all at once and I really have counting by sevens to thank for that. 2017 was quite a year. I was in 10th grade but I was technically in my first year at a new high school. I transferred. I didn't read at all the previous year. I was going through some th things and I was not reading. I was not doing really much of anything. But uh, the next year I left that school and I transferred into an arts school and I started to make actual friends. I had been making lots of friends in elementary school but and middle school, but high school the first year was really rough for me and I wasn't really making any friends and I was having a really hard time. And so I ended up switching schools completely but I found an art school that really welcomed me and I was there for literary arts so I was writing for school I was creating these stories and having these workshops and having this supportive atmosphere that is just truly unbelievable and I'm so grateful for and I also found Six of Crows that year and Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom were the first books that I made friends through. So I remember making one of my first friends in one of my classes because we would trade book recommendations and TV show recommendations. And so I had them read Six of Crows because I was loving it and wanting to talk about it. And they sent me the recommendation for Teen Wolf. And so I would be watching episodes of Teen Wolf. They would be reading Six of Crows 
slowly and so we would talk about the chapters we talked about the episodes and to this day we're still really close friends and i have six of crows to thank for that six of crows also was what introduced me to the bookish internet so it was the first fandom i guess you could say i was a part of i was really into instagram i had many bookstagrams some people um who currently follow me are from those original bookstagrams, which is crazy because there's probably been 10 different accounts. I would always delete accounts. I'd always remake accounts. And now I technically have a bookstagram, but I don't even, you know, mention it because I'm not on it. I don't have Instagram on my phone. It's just, it's not an app that works great with my mental health, but it is something I found through Six of Crows and I found Goodreads and I now I use Storygraph. I'm you know, I'm loyal to Storygraph, but back then I found Goodreads and just the bookish community and booktube. I found a bunch of OG booktubers I still watch to this day, and really Six of Crows is to thank for some of my closest friendships, but also just why I'm here now. <laughs> so in 2017, I started really getting back into reading, but 2018 was when I had my first Goodreads account. I read I think 180 books that year. A number that I will never come close to. Like I just do not read in the way I used to. I read a lot slower. I read a lot more critically. I read very different books than I was reading and that's no shame or shade to either person I am today or then. But I remember just having that newfound obsession again and that light was reignited from back when you know i was reading in elementary school it was back and i was i was reading and i could not be stopped and i found some of my all-time favorites i found the book if we were villains which i have now reread six times i believe i also found the book the wicker king which i've reread three times i think and it is an all-time favorite both of those books are my go-to book recommendations for like what book is your favorite and I'm just like one of these like I usually recommend it depending on the person but both of those books are truly so special to me and especially the Wicker King I have a tattoo on my ribs that was my first tattoo I ever got was a crosshatch in reference to that book where one of the characters gets a crosshatch stick and poke on his ribs and I got a crosshatch stick and poke on my ribs and that story was just so special to me and also if we were villains the characters and the writing was so inspiring to me and just it opened up this world of reading where I would read books and they would stick with me so intensely and I would want to reread books. I would want to talk about these books. I just loved these books and they really became a part of who I am, a part of who I presented myself to be. And they really just altered who I am completely. <laughs> As I discovered the online bookish community, I started realizing that there were these books out there that were written in such beautiful, lush ways that really inspired my own writing, but also just what I started picking up more. I picked up more magical realism and fantasy, and I started moving a little bit away from YA, and I picked up The Starless Sea for the first time in like 2019, I believe, and that book changed my reading taste and writing style forever, I think. I learned that I really love flowery prose that is just stories within stories within stories and novels that really just take me into these other worlds almost returning to my 2009 obsession with magic and fairy tales and things like that i really rediscovered that love but in adult fiction and i started reading more adult fiction i started picking up more adult but even in 2020 i also discovered relatability in books. I really started diversifying my reading in 2020, which is very recent, I have to say. I grew up very in, in a place of privilege where, you know, I, I didn't I didn't actively seek out books that weren't about people who were like me. And even then, I was able to start finding more relatability when I started 
diversifying my reading. And I also just found better books. I'm going to be so honest, when I started actively diversifying my reading and picking up more books by just different people, uh, I started finding more all-time favorites. And I also started reading books like Alatsaway and Radio Silence and specifically Alatsaway that really opened up like just books that don't have to follow these rules that I always thought there were. And Alatsaway has such a fantastic story and also has an asexual character and I was able to really relate to that. And um, Radio Silence I also have to give my um, flowers to because that was one of the first books that I saw with a character on the asexual spectrum and I remember it really being a discovery for me. I didn't know what asexual meant before reading that book, let alone other um, terms like demisexual or things like that. And I remember just reading that book and really feeling seen. And then, yeah, it was just a very special experience and realizing that friendships and stories were also something I really wanted to see. Coming to 2021, I started discovering a love for horror. So I started picking up darker fiction, such as Sorrowland, which remains a favorite of all time. I need to reread that book because it was just one of the first books that I read that really left an impression on me. And every page I felt was like a piece of art, like a work of art. The writing, the characterization, the plot, the themes in it, I just remember every part of it really striking a chord with me and I loved the darker atmosphere of it and I started picking up other books similar to that. I also picked up In the Dream House for the first time by Carmen Maria Machado. I picked up more of Carmen Maria Machado's work and just really found a love for books that were grittier and darker and I, yeah, I have never gone back. I still absolutely love books like that and I'm so happy for Sorrowland and thankful that that book really kind of put me on that path. 2022 was the year that I really started picking up some translated fiction. I had just sort of stumbled upon a recommendation by someone for The Miracles of the Nemea General Store and I read it and I was just changed. I realized that I really wanted to seek out more Japanese translated fiction and then from that, you know, every other language than English, I was looking and seeking and reading and just loving the way that books are written in translation. And I also picked up Jawbone, which I also loved. And just realizing that these stories, I was, I just, there was just a whole new world for me in literature to enjoy and learn from and just absolutely adore. And I also discovered within, you know, the 2020s, um, the early 2020s, that sounds crazy to say, but works from, you know, authors like Akwike Amezi. I read their memoir, Dear Sundaran, in 2022, I believe. I could be wrong. I, I read it whenever it came out, but I remember really following into a love for nonfiction. Before this, I really wasn't picking up nonfiction. I thought I was you know, a fiction girly and that I would only be bored by nonfiction. I, you know, it was, it was a very silly assumption that I had made, but I started picking up memoirs. I started picking up uh, other forms of nonfiction as well. And just realizing that nonfiction, well-written nonfiction is just as good, if not sometimes better than fiction. And yeah, I'm so happy for her that year for really discovering translated fiction and nonfiction. Now we have last year, which I have deemed the year of essay collections and short stories. And I found new favorites such as Brandon Taylor and, oh my God, Brandon Taylor and then Hanif Abdurraqib with, you know, They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. And then Brandon Taylor's 
uh, short story collection, Filthy Animals, was just game-changing for me. I also found another favorite of all time, which is Disfigured on Fairy Tales and Disability and Making Space and Amanda by Amanda LaDuke. And I remember discovering a love for disability studies as well, a bit in 2022, but also 2023. Just when, when I, you know, have gotten into college, I started taking courses that um, really set me on a path for care work and disability studies and later library sciences. So yeah, also sociology. I just, I started reading a little more academically, but in a way that I found was just so fun and fulfilling. And yeah, I, I have not gone back and I love a good short story collection. I love a good essay collection. And yeah, I'm, I'm predicting now that 2024 is going to be the year of specifically short stories. I've read a good amount of essay collections, not to say I'm not picking up any more. I definitely will. But 2024, I can feel is the year of short stories and the year of graphic novels. I'm also getting back into my graphic novels era and I'm loving it. I'm loving every second of it. So that brings us to the present and thus kind of concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. This is a bit different than videos I've been making and I really enjoyed it. I liked kind of taking a deep dive into books that really made me who I am and I'm so curious to hear about the books that you feel have made you who you are, even just some of your childhood favorites, some of your recent favorites, a book that really introduced you to a genre you now love, or a type of writing, or a type of characterization, or even a trope that you really now seek out. I would love to hear all about it. And if you enjoyed this video and it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe become a part of the Wicker Library. You're welcome here. And if you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And please do comment if you enjoyed, uh, if you have any thoughts or books to recommend. And if you made it all the way to an end, perhaps comment a clock emoji. I don't know why, but a clock emoji to signify the time spent reading and learning. I don't know. Something, imagine something very philosophical that I just said that was really cool. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.